right, I did have a bit of uh, trouble setting this up, but I had to disable other uh, Bluetooth devices, and I finally got it uh, working. Uh, it looks like I've installed it twice accidentally. I don't know how I did that. Anyway, um, anyway, we can now just go into here, and hopefully it's going to connect. Yep, and we can unlock. You can see it's locked at the moment. Okay, so we'll prop that up. So we'll just unlock like that, and boom, it flipped it back, and we are in. And I actually spoke at length on the phone with uh, the designer of um, this Bluetooth uh, lock here, and it was a fascinating discussion. And he said even though he knows every single line of code that he's programmed into this thing, basically, um, he can't hack it. So, and of course, there's a QR code under here. Of, of course, you get one, and it's on the back of uh, the unit as well. And basically, this is generated randomly at the uh, factory, and they keep absolutely no record of it whatsoever. So, if you lose this sheet of paper, or you lose the sticker that's on the back of the lock, which is installed inside the safe, and you could back up that any way you like, but once you lose that, they cannot supply you a new uh, lock or they can't access it, they can't hack it, you can't hack their database, you can't break into their factory and steal their database because it doesn't exist. The only way you're going to be able to get inside this thing is if you physically have the shoe phone that either has the uh, master code set up on it, you can have up to uh, two phones set up uh, that way, or of course one of the uh, user phones uh, you set up could get in as well. And he, um, interestingly he was telling me about how they actually uh, pair this device because the uh, key is actually generated inside the lock itself, when the master phone gives access to like another like user phone, a lower level user phone that uh, can actually uh, get into this thing, then they don't actually um, share any, uh, like, you know, no key is kept in here or shared with uh, the other device. Basically, it gives permission for the other device to then negotiate with uh, the micro in here to actually uh, generate, like, to set up pairing and key in. Yes, in theory, um, it did confirm that, you know, you could actually install some custom written firmware, you know, spyware um, that could get onto the phone that then could actually, uh, you know, potentially access the thing, but you have to physically be there, and then you've got to physically have that uh, device as well, and once you've, uh, like, got spyware on somebody's phone, well, you know, they're going to steal everything else. They're not just going to worry about what's in your safe. Anyway, there's lots of other interesting details that go into the security pairing of this thing. And he says one of the key features is that they actually use um, sta industry standards for actually uh, doing uh, this sort of key encryption and stuff like that. They haven't written their own from scratch because that can, because they're not necessarily like the best encryption secure experts but they know so they leave it up to uh, the people who've written um, you know the secure key libraries and, and they leave it up to them uh, to actually do the encryption which is also used in military uh, level uh, you know encrypted devices and stuff like that so they leave it up to them they haven't custom written their own encryption engine um, so they're using off-the-shelf standards there. So anyway, this thing, I, I think it seems, very, you know, after talking with him, it sounds very, very secure. I th they've thought of pretty much everything you could for a Bluetooth-enabled lock. Right, so I'm actually going to upgrade a safe here and try and Bluetooth uh, enable it, see if it works. This is an Australian-made guard all uh, drug safe. Uh, you've seen this in a uh, previous video here. Show you how I've taken the uh, top plate off here so we can access the mechanism inside. So this has uh, three 25 millimeter bolts, I think it is, um, and a huge uh, dog bar on the uh, side here, just in case anyone tries to uh, attack the hinges on this thing. So yeah, this is a European uh, cab locks, um, uh, six lever uh, job, European uh, VDS uh, certified and everything else, a relocker, which I'll show you at the moment. But basically we turn the key like that, and then we can open and close that but once you remove the key boom and i've shown this in a previous video it's got a spring-loaded relocker here and th this is your relocker or plate there's various different ways that safe manufacturers can implement uh these but basically if somebody tries to punch or drill out that lock you can see that that metal's holding that spring back but if somehow that comes off boom the spring just springs up like that and you can't even if the lock's open we now can't open it. 
So any good safe will have a relocking mechanism like this. It can be a spring-loaded one, you can have multiple ones, or it can be a glass plate relocker. They're kind of like the gold uh, standard, so that there's a big glass sheet um, in there. There's different ways manufacturers implement those. And if you try to dr actually drill through the safe, you'll shatter the glass sheet and boom, um, the relocker is going to come in place. And yep, yep, that's major attack a lot harder. Anyway, this is a pretty decent safe. It's got 10 millimeter solid steel front door. You can see it's got a uh, probably a magnesium anti-drill uh, plate in there as well for uh, drilling through and attacking the lock. And it's got a nice welded uh, bracket on the back uh, to actually stop the lock being punched out. And, you know, this is a pretty good safe design. Not absolutely top of the range, but, you know, you, you get what you pay for here. So as I said, this is a European cab locks one and it uses the uh, universe, kind of like a de facto industry standard, I guess, uh, footprint, and the Ross locks actually match these as well. So you can interchange, typically on these digital safes, the good ones at least, you can interchange the locks. So we can replace this from a key base lock to a much better, more secure uh, Ross 700 series key lock, or we could uh, use, in this case, the Bluetooth or the electronic keypad. So anyway, we can actually uh, just take that out there, and then there's the uh, plate which mounts on that, there's the manganese uh, anti-drill plate there and the keyway. So unfortunately for the Bluetooth lock, the keyway is, uh, on this safe is vertical, but on the uh, Bluetooth one, it's horizontal wave key. So if we want to install that, we're going to have to like drill out a larger size keyway there, unfortunately. But anyway, there's the uh, European cab locks and uh, that's not stainless steel, of course. You can tell that's uh, alloy. So this is an STUV uh, cab locks, um, high security, six lever, um, a pick resistant lock. And it's a type 41992 um, and it's VDS certified. I'm not sure if you can see that, but you know, it's, it's a pretty decent international lock. But it's not on par with the uh, Ross uh, 700 9 lever uh, one. So if you wanted to upgrade this, you would definitely upgrade it to the uh, Ross 700 is in terms of key locks. And you'll notice before how the uh, electronic uh, locks here, they actually uh, came with this ha uh, additional hard plate that also has a cable thing. Because if you've got the cable in here, you've got to get the cable under this, under this and then out the front to the uh, electronic lock on the uh, front or in the case of the uh, Bluetooth one you've got to get the wires out to the uh, battery pack on the front. And that's what that uh, hard plate does, it just allows you to get the uh, wiring out so that the wiring's not squished. So this Ross uh, 700 series, we could actually just retrofit this uh, directly in. As you can see, like it, it mounts absolutely uh, perfectly. Need the slightly uh, longer bolts there. Unfortunately, um, this bracket uh, for the guard all safe because this, this is such a big chunky boy. Um, yeah, you would have to uh, cut out that and uh, either remove uh, the top bracket entirely or uh, you know weld on a new one over the top. But otherwise, it's um, absolutely trivial to upgrade this with a Ross um, 700. Uh, series so no worries whatsoever in fact you don't even need that plate but you would because that's an additional uh, drill measure now to upgrade either the Bluetooth lock or the uh, Ross electronic lock because this is a uh, swing bolt uh, design here um, we have to actually mount it in this direction like this so that this pushes on but if you actually have it over in this direction like this um, then uh, this when this tries to uh, push in it's not even though you've unlocked it um, this swing bolt is not going to swing out of the way it's just going to get stuck so you have to actually mount it like that and I've installed the uh, Bluetooth lock down here with the relocker down in here so I'll put the relocker bar back on there I did actually have to get a right-handed version because the other left-handed version didn't work. Uh, no, you can't actually get in there and redo the plates and uh, flip it over. The key doesn't work. So anyway, I've got a specific uh, right-handed uh, version. You've got to make sure you get the right one. So there's absolutely no way you're getting this bad boy open. Now, of course, I've got the app and it's currently in range. And we can just click that and unlock. Boom. And it's unlocked like that. Bob's your uncle, so, so it is locked. We're not getting into that sucker, but I can just, I can actually go in there and do the unlocked thing. So it's currently locked, I can just unlock, and boom, we are in. But the interesting thing about this, as I mentioned, the Bluetooth antenna is actually not outside here. This is just the battery. The Bluetooth antenna 
is inside the stainless steel enclosure here inside a 10 millimeter safe so you know like there's there is the keyhole uh on the small keyhole on the front where um you know some of the rf could bounce around and leak out but basically you've got it they're relying on the fact that you've got to have it really close you won't get your usual 10 meter uh bluetooth range or anything like that with uh this thing it's got to be like you know fairly close so basically it's inside a giant faraday cage here and you've got to be you know reasonably close close to it I've got to be you know within half a meter or something like that but it the bluetooth is you know it can pick up low energy stuff and you only need a sniff of an oily rag to get out of there and uh so to speak in rf terms uh for it to get there but the, the problem with these like I wouldn't be using a bluetooth lock for a home safe it's just it's just not the application unless you're maybe getting into it like every single day but if you've just got like an occasional use safe this is not the application where you would use a bluetooth lock you'd use a digital electronic uh, keypad lock or you'd use a key uh, key lock or even a uh, tumbler lock uh, you know these bluetooth applications this like a home safe like this is not the application for it it's where you need uh, security order it's in public access and stuff like that but anyway a blue Bluetooth enabled safe. Isn't that cool? Come on, open. <laughs> Unlocking. Ta -da. Beautiful. Look at that. But yeah, uh, give me the digital keypad any day, I think. Hello.